Allie with Allie'sOrganics.com. It's October and it's time to get your garlic in the ground for optimum bulb size and a successful harvest next summer. Garlic likes nice, loose soil. This bed's been grown in already this year and so we're going to add plenty of compost to it so it has some nutrients. We're going to work this in. If we can work it in deep, the garlic will like it a lot better. You can see how loose it is. The garlic's going to like this. Just smooth it out. Garlic also responds really well to nitrogen. There's a couple of choices here. Feather meal is a good one because it's a 1200. Pro Organic, which is what we are going to be using, is a 1300, and it's just a granulated form, which is kind of easier to apply. And another choice is blood meal. These are just strictly nitrogen. Just take your Pro Organic, or whatever choice of nitrogen that you're using, and sprinkle it over the surface, and then just lightly work it in. That should be good. The night before planting your garlic, there's a little thing that we do that's made our garlic grow a lot bigger and healthier. It's just a gallon of water and a handful of kelp meal. Let it soak overnight. That way it's ready to go when it's time to plant. Now that your kelp meal has soaked overnight, it's basically a kelp meal tea. It's ready to have some other ingredients added to it. We can add humic acid, a granular, or a humic plex which is a concentrate. Of this, we're only going to be using an eighth of a teaspoon. We're also going to add some baking soda to it, just like a teaspoon or so. This would help with any funguses that could be in any of your garlics. Just mix it up. Now we're going to soak our garlic. This is a soft neck garlic, Mount St. Helens. We're going to pull it apart and let this soak for about an hour. What this mix basically does is plump up the garlic. Kind of takes in the nutrients, gives it a jump start, you might say. Now that our bread is prepared and our garlic is soaked, it's time to plant. We want to plant it with the pointed end up, roots down, obviously, and the soil should be soft enough that we should have no problem just popping it in the ground. Just poke it in. About two inches of soil on top is what you're going to want. Plant these about four inches apart. And you can stagger them so that you can actually get more usage out of your soil. If you're growing elephant garlic, basically do it the same way. You're just going to want to plant these six to eight inches apart because they get a lot bigger. If you live in a colder area, you can just put some compost over the top of it once it starts to grow. That way it'll protect it a little bit, just in case you get a deep freeze. Once your garlic is planted, don't forget to mark it. We plant 35 different varieties here, and it would be horrible if we forgot to mark our varieties and make sure it's something that won't blow away through the winter time. If you live in a dry climate, you may find that you have to water every two weeks to once a month if you aren't getting any precipitation. Let your soil be your guide. One of the things that we do here is plant by phases of the moon, which just simply means that we plant our garlic on a full moon, and we do that always in October. Come springtime, when your garlic is actively growing, it's time to give it another dose of fertilizer. Give it nitrogen when it's actively growing, but not at its bulbing stage. Come summertime, watch your garlic closely. When two-thirds of it die back, it's time to stop watering. Stop watering for about two weeks before harvesting your garlic. You might want to check the bulb, though, to make sure that it is cloving. I'm Allie with AllieOrganics.com. Happy gardening.